So this is a wrap up of the first episode of the scope clock build. Um, as I said at the beginning I was expecting that this would be fairly straightforward and that we would be able to put it together in nice easy to eat steps. Um, but it didn't quite work out like that in the end and you can read all about this on the article on tube clock db but basically um, what happened was the first step went nearly fine and that is uh, putting in the low voltage circuit um, based around the voltage regulator now it all went fine but when i plugged the power into the socket we didn't get the red led coming on and the problem turned out to be that um, I hadn't read the schematic in enough detail and in fact I was missing the switch which is an on off switch and I was also missing a jumper here which allows you to select between external power and USB power and I had to put that jumper in and jump it to say external power and then this all uh, works and the red LED came on the next step was um, the controller circuit and I had some problems here. I was expecting that what we would do is we would put in the controller, the Atmel 328P, um, the crystal and the ballast capacitors and a couple of um, decoupling capacitors, the LED, the green LED and we'd turn it on and it would start doing something on the green LED. But in the end, that isn't what uh, turned out, uh, isn't what happened at all. Um, I had to search around for a fair old bit before I understood that for the green LED to come on, we need to have the real-time clock chip there. Now, there's an I2C connection between these two, and it appears that the controller won't start, won't be happy until it sees the real-time clock chip there. So then I had to put the clock chip on, some more supporting components and the battery, um, and add in the one pulse per second link, which is, where is it? I can't find it anymore. Then I lost it. Oh, over here, look, there it is. Add in that. Um, and then it started to flash the LED, showing that the controller was in fact fine. Um, the voltage reference circuit here was absolutely no problems at all. Just one little problem that I had was that in fact, the 2K was, uh, resistor was missing from my kit and I had to um, substitute it with two 1Ks tied together like that. But apart from that, very, very straightforward, that part of the circuit. Um, it's all written up on the Tube Clock DB site on the first part of the build. Um, and so you can go and see it there if you're interested to know more details about it. But so far, so good. If I'd just approached it the way that Jan suggested and throw everything on the board, I'm sure it would have just worked straight away. But I like to test things as I go along. Just a little demonstration of how I understood that in fact the controller was working even before the RTC circuit was built. If I power on with switch one held down, switch one held down, power on, and you can see that the green LED is flashing away like crazy there. And that means that the um, controller has gone into programmer mode and it's all fine. And now that the clock is uh, built so far, let's power on again, but without holding down the switch. And we'll see, in fact, there we are, the green LED flashing away merrily, ticking away the seconds. So there we have the proof that the circuit is working fine. And actually if I probe on now on the pins of the controller with the scope, I can see there's lots and lots of digital stuff going on there. So, so far so good.